Good morning, good people. Oh, my light went off. Power banks. Power banks are awesome. Good morning, good people. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing amazing, great, awesome. Can you do me a favor? Go down to the comments below. Drop a hashtag, good morning, good people. Leave me a comment about today's video. Ask me a question. Let me know what you guys have been up to, what you've been liking, what you've not been liking. And just let, let's touch base. I like chatting to you guys in the comments. I try to reply to every single one of you. Another thing, go to the like button, smack it like 17 times so you can make, I don't know why I'm doing things with my hands. And then go down below, smack the like button a whole bunch of times so it really, really knows that you're around. And then uh, let's get down to business. So a lot of you guys have been asking me for editing videos, like retouching and like tips and tricks and stuff. So I'm gonna do one today. So when I shoot, especially dance photography on studio backdrops, like the paper ones, um, when you're doing full body shots, you never really have enough space to fill the frame with the backdrop. So you often end up filling in space. So there's a action I've created to separate the background from the, the subject and then just clean up the background with that. So we use it for cleanup, but we also use it for extending the backdrop. You can use this to change the color of the background. You can add some depth of field with it. Um, and if you want this action, I'm gonna give it to you for free with the newsletter. So if you haven't yet subscribed, there's a link down below. I give away Lightroom presets. I give away DaVinci LUTs. I give away action. So this will be the first action that you can load into your Photoshop and just use it. It's not a very difficult action. You could probably make it by yourself in within seconds, but if you're not so inclined, it's for free. You can have it. Go nuts. Um, you can see this picture we got you of Kaylin. Uh, it's a photo shoot I did for her at her house. So we put up the studio background. It's like a grayish brownish backdrop. And then when I had to zoom out to get the, her in frame with the top and the bottom, you obviously left with these like um, empty spaces on the right here and on the left here. And then what you can see here is like there was sunlight coming into the room. So just making like weird shadows and you can see the floors kind of like warpy and dirty and so we're gonna fix all of that real quick and then the retouching I'll just end the video um, I'll just end the video there and I'll retouch it finished so very simply to fix the background very simple so the first thing we're gonna do we grab you can grab a lasso you can grab this one whatever you grab it you click a whole bunch of times around this area that you want to go around then all you're gonna do is go shift backspace content aware full yes 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 enter and then this usually does a perfect job. Sometimes it throws in a foot or hair or something weird in there. So, but this one did a pretty good job. Then we'll do this to the other side. You can even do it to this piece over here. Uh, shift backspace. And then we'll do it on this side as well. The only time this is really a problem is say her hand was uh, over going really close to the edge of this. So if it was if her hand was going over here, that would be a problem. It wouldn't really know how to fix it. It would put another piece of a hand there or something, but it does pretty good jobs like this. Um, we can get into those other methods as well later on. But yeah, so that's pretty much the background extended. So um, you could also even make the background bigger now if you wanted to with that same technique. So say, say you wanted the background to seem even bigger, you can, um, so let's say we want the background to look that big. You can do the same method, just go, let's use the marquee tool this time. Um, so we use the marquee tool this time, we kind of select a piece like that, shift backspace, enter. And it will do almost a perfect job, you'll see. But we even put a little bit of a weird shadow there. We'll do this side, shift backspace. Yep, and then we'll just, this one, I don't know if this one's gonna work because our hands are close to it. It's probably gonna put a hand in there, but we'll see. It might do a good job. So you can use any selection tool for this, uh, but I mean the marquee works for big areas like that and the lasso tool kind of works the other one. So there you've already got like a giant background which we would never have been able to take to a house, which actually looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So the next step you wanna do is fix up the background, which is what today's video is about. So you see these like patchy bits here where it's going like, Dark light, dark light, dark light. So that's from my backdrop's kind of old and it's been sitting in the garage a long time, so it warped a little. So when it's hanging, it's not perfect. It's not a brand new backdrop. And then this is a shadow from my umbrella. And then that's warpy from, it's an old backdrop. It's an old backdrop. So we're gonna show you how we're gonna fix this, okay? First things first, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast with a little bit of an S curve. Yeah, and then now what I would, what you can do is sit here and select her and then just paintbrush it or whatever. So what I've done is I've made an action. I just click, click backdrop 
what it's gonna do is select her and then it's gonna cut her from the background. So there's two layers, so it's her on top, background at the bottom. So you can see over here, um, that's just her, that's just the backdrop, okay? So if you just look at her, that's what's selected. You can see it messed up the hair a little bit, but this is not too important because we probably won't be cleaning that area. So this actually does work really well. And then this is uh, just the background and obviously that piece of her, and then this is everything. So when we put it together, if we work on this layer, it won't really mess with her because it can't go over this piece because you're working underneath this layer. And then the easiest method is take your brush tool, so you guys can push B. I've moved mine to else because I use my right hand for shortcuts. So I've moved mine, it's not B anymore, but it's B for you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just go into your uh, mixer brush tool right here. Um, these things, you can tweak them a little bit, but I don't mess with it too much. Just make sure you, you, you turn this one off and you leave this one on. That just clears the brush strokes, it doesn't pick up new colors and so on. Okay, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take your brush, Try get a really big soft one, especially when you're working with a general area. And the mixer brush is basically gonna take what you click on and smear it, if that makes sense. And then every time you pick up your brush, it's gonna clear it. That's why we turn this thing on. It's gonna clear what you've picked up. So you can just pick up all the time. But you can basically click in an area like this and just smudge it. Now, the reason I smudge it, as opposed to taking an old paintbrush and just painting in new colors is it's it's harder to keep the like tone going so you see how it's dark yeah and then it like goes light and then it's dark again you can keep that so by just going sorry i can't see so much because of this glare but you you can basically see that it's smoothing the already there colors so yeah where it's light if i work here it will stay light right as long as what you click on first so if you click here it's going to take a light color into the dark so you can go and then into the dark right the idea is just to get the background to look like a smooth background. So from that few little clicks we just did there, you can already see what it looked like before and after. It took me like three seconds. Okay, there's one thing we're gonna have to fix up right at the end, so just stay tuned for that because you will want to do that. Now, this is the part where it works the best. So you see here where it's patchy? The like tones are patchy and there's like a few like bumps and stuff. This works the best. So from here, we're gonna work on this area. We're gonna, I rotate mine just so I can work in straight lines. The only thing you want to do is not pull too much from where the subject is because if it picks up hair, it's gonna do this with it. You can see the hairs appear there. You don't want that. So what I do is I just work towards the subject because that hides it behind her. So you'll see now. Right, you can see what we did there. So if I do deselect, select, see how it looks. And then you'll see, that that's why I use, this is why I use the mixer brush because now this is not one flat color. It's still got gradient like it had. And the shadow, so her shadow over there will stay. So I mean, you'll see now. So the shadow that she made is what makes it look very real. So you keep the shadow, you just, all you're doing, all you're doing is smoothing the shadow. Right, and then we'll do a chair. Then we'll do it here. Right, so you, we, we can work on this a lot more, but you can basically see what it looks like now. That's, that's before, that's after. So remember how it started? It looked like that, it looked like that, and now it looks like, you know? So it's a big improvement in very little time. With my explanation, it was quite quick. Now, where you run into a problem is the select subject is not perfect, especially when you've used the wide aperture. So if I zoom in, you'll see the problem. She's got a, so you see here, you can see it already. You see her finger, we've kind of like painted over the edge of her finger because it didn't mess, it didn't, it didn't do the, a, a perfect job. So what you can do is from here, take the bottom layer, duplicate it, put it on the top, then just alt click on the mask button so it's hidden. And then all you're gonna do is take a white paintbrush. You can take quite a hard one and then make sure it's white. 
And then all you're gonna do is paint back the finger. So you can see now the finger comes back, right? You just do this on the main areas where there's a problem. It's usually around fingers, nails, um, hair sometimes, but you'll see in general, like look over here, it's done a perfect job. As long as the contrast was pretty good, even around her face is done pretty good. You can see we've done slight change over here, but you wouldn't even notice that unless you zoomed in like I just did. Her feet even did a pretty good job of not being, you can see there, little, little bit of a problem. And it's usually on the feet, so it's the, the stuff furthest away from the, the focus point because it's obviously the depth of field is blurred and now it's soft and now it's trying to, it's trying to soften the edge as you softened it with the camera lens. So that's that. Hope you guys learned something. That's pretty much the shot. If you want to see the final edit, stick around. I'm going to speed edit through it and I'll just speed it up with some music and then you'll see the final result. You'll obviously see this on my Instagram too. Um, if you guys have questions about this stuff or if you want me to help you use the action or show you how to make actions yourself, let me know. I mean, I have actions for everything over here. Um, skin stuff and color stuff and you know, everything. I hope you guys find this useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell, uh, drop me a comment, all kinds of stuff. Um, if you want that light that's in the background, that's a Ulanzi light. Um, there's a link down below. This light, this blue car is coming from the left here. It's all cool and that's an ML60 lighting, the main stuff. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020 going into a Zoom recorder. And uh, I edit everything with a Wacom tablet. I use the very cheap small one. And, and that's that. And obviously I'm filming with an a 74 because it's amazing and it's kind of like my main camera. Anyway. Let's do this, let's go, let's have some fun. Uh, let's make some more stuff. Let me know if you guys enjoy the the photo editing thing. Cause I edit so many photos, but sometimes I don't feel like recording it because I don't know what to do with it. Like it's not really a tutorial. So mate, I was thinking about doing like um, complete edit where it's like an hour and a half of me editing um, to like lo-fi music. Maybe that's a thing you guys wanna watch. Just like, I'm not explaining what I'm doing, but you can watch me in real time. So I won't speed it up. I'll just like work. Um, if you're into something like that, let me know. I'll film it. Um, yeah, let's go. Hello? Hello? All right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, seven, twenty-two. We are on people's. This thing is very, very in the way. And I think it needs to be like right here. Just I'm not sure if I should be using this microphone. Um, good people. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing great. My name is Robert Harris from Optical. I don't know why I keep tapping my hand. See the like button, click it a whole bunch of times. Make sure that it knows you like it. Okay, let's do this. Another thing, go to the like button, smack it like 17 times so you can make, I don't know why I'm doing things with my hands.